This is the all new Team Associated B7 and we've had it for a little while now so I thought I'd make a video on all of the changes, all of the upgrades, everything about this car that you could possibly want to know. And we're going to start at the front and slowly move backwards. So, straight into it, what is the first thing that we notice on the front end? Well, the main obvious one has got to be the KPI and that is kind of one that got people commenting on uh, Facebook and got a lot of conversations going. So, kingpin inclination. I'm going to do a separate video which explains everything about KPI, kind of the detail of it. But just quickly, it kind of just alters how the steering feels in the corner. It gives the steering, I think, a much more one-to-one -one feel, as some people call it, on the wheel, where what you're turning is what the car is doing. It just makes the steering a lot smoother, but you don't lose any steering, is what it feels like so far. So it just kind of really refines the steering feel and helps you out there. Now, what else do we notice on the front end? Well, the camber link on the outside is now vertical. And this is useful because that means you can kind of get as much angle on that camber link as you want without having to fettle the inside down, anything like that. You just have extra adjustability there. It sometimes can be useful to raise up or down the entire link to kind of maybe take away a bit of edginess or, or sometimes you can gain traction and things if you have the whole thing lower. So that's another very useful adjustment that we didn't have previously. Another thing on the front end is the shocks. Now, the shocks also mount slightly wider than before. The, the motion ratio at the front is slightly higher. The holes are kind of one further out, so that is an effect. And also has a 23mm shock shaft. So again, just design changes here. Um, things that are different to take a note of. What else is there? The bulkhead at the front is actually a millimeter higher than previously so we have these plastic shims as well which we can slide between the bulkhead and the chassis to adjust the height but yeah with zero shims the bulkhead is a millimeter higher which is i think something that we kind of needed for carpet before that's just going to give you a little bit faster reaction and definitely make the car a little bit more pointy around the middle for for the carpet racing when you really need that agility and then you can add the shims back in Never you want to calm it back down again. So that's a nice change there. What else do we have on the front? Well, we have a narrow pivot and very long wishbones. So what's that about? Well, obviously that kind of matches up with the rear. We have this whole long arm geometry, narrow pivot now. And what Associated say from their testing and what it does feel like is that the traction is just a lot more consistent and kind of, it, the car's just a lot easier to drive and more predictable, I would say. Like, when we ran it at works up on the slippy surface, when the car begins to drift, it feels very easy to control and predict what is going to happen. Also, longer arms can kind of deal with jumps and bumps slightly better. It has a big effect on how the roll centers all move and work. So, it's obviously something that's been tested a lot and has found to be better. So, that's kind of a new sort of innovation that Associated are going with, really with the two wheel drive. Um, moving slightly further back now, let's take the body shell off. What do we have? Well, the next thing I'll notice is the battery strap. And honestly, I cannot tell you how amazing this battery strap is because literally you finish your run, no tools needed, bang, flip them to the side, battery's out. And it holds it in really well and nice. So I'm super happy about that battery strap. Um, what then do we have? We have the motor mount. Now the motor plate looks kind of funky. It's not a big flat piece like before. It's a low slung thing. So the, obviously the center of gravity is lower. Two screws at the bottom of the motor. I think it's okay because obviously the motor rests on the chassis. So it's not really an issue with the stress because the motor can just hold on the chassis. So I think it's fine. And it just literally is lower down. I think it's how touring cars are some people have said so yeah that's kind of a nice cool thing as well definitely looks cool again another big thing the gearbox five gears so the motor is now further forwards because of the five gear gearbox that's sort of the reason behind it and what does that do well that moves all of the weight closer to the center of the car um 
that's the idea behind it. The weight closer to the centre of the car means that the inertia is not as high for the car to rotate. So it's easier to start the car rotating, but just as importantly, it's easier to stop the car rotating as well. So you can kind of start the car pivoting and then end it pivoting a lot easier. It's not going to feel like it's trying to swing round as much. It'll be easier to just stop. So I think that makes it more agile, obviously, on carpet, easier to just manoeuvre, having less inertia there. But also on dirt, it kind of makes a drift or a slide easier to control because you sort of have the power to start it and stop it much easier than before. So that's kind of that. Um, again, moving backwards, we have got a new gear diff. Now, this gear diff accepts the four-wheel drive LTC gears, which have worked very well in the four-wheel drive. And yeah, it just holds a lot more oil. It's a much better design, really, and is supposed to make the car much better and more consistent over a long run. And it does feel it does feel to give the car a very nice feeling on power, I think, on carpet. It definitely feels more consistent on power to me. Now, the other thing with the diff is also the drive shafts have a slightly bigger ball in them. They're the same diameter as the four-wheel drive. So you've got the bigger ball in the out drive, bigger ball on the drive shaft. And that's the same for the ball diff as well, obviously. So that's another change at the rear end there. Another thing I noticed is the roll bar. Now, the roll bar actually now goes underneath the drive shaft and is super low to the arm. This is also similar to the front. We now, I missed that on the front actually. The roll bar comes round from behind, underneath the steering and connects at the front. And it's just a much easier system of connecting and disconnecting a roll bar. You don't have to set the grub screws anymore to get the tension right. You literally just slide these collars on, do them up, and your roll bar's done because those blue collars are always gonna fit perfectly into the plastic. It's also much easier when you're trying to take your diff out because you don't have to undo the roll bar, get all that. Diff just comes straight out. So that is a perfect one. What else do we see? Well, at the rear end, the rear wishbones are also slightly different. They're now kind of a swept back design, it looks like. And all the holes for the shocks are in the same size. You don't have to flip the wishbones around anymore. They stay in the same direction. And yeah, they just stay where they are. Obviously, we've got the long arm geometry I spoke about with the front as well. That marries up together nicely. Um, and we also have more wheelbase adjustment. I think... It looks to me like it can go two millimeters shorter than before. I might be wrong, but that's what it looks like to me. So yeah, we have four millimeters of adjustment on the inside rather than two now. And that is also a nice thing, just to have that extra bit of adjustment there. Looking underneath the car, the chassis is much narrower and also stops sooner at the back. And what effect is that gonna have? Well, the idea there is with the takeoffs of jumps and sort of any features on the track, you're getting less scrub from the chassis on the up ramp. It's going to be a more consistent takeoff and landing. And yeah, why wouldn't you want that? So I think just having a little bit more clearance there, because you always see your chassis worn out at the back, that's where it's catching. So if you can shorten that down as much as possible, you're going to reduce how badly that's happening. Finally, we have the wing and the body. Now, the body's been designed with a, a different tool to the engineers used before and it just looks so sleek and sits so low to the car it is a lovely looking shell i think so i definitely don't think there's as much need for like a aftermarket shell as before i plan on running this shell probably the whole time the car's out and then also we've got this nice seven inch wing now with it's got big sides on it the same kind of like sides as the 6.5 inch wing so it's got bigger size on it to the old seven inch wing and also just looks very cool with the little sevens in the corner so yeah that's pretty much it hopefully you've enjoyed it and uh yeah we'll see you in the next one